So yeah, the um, if I could make a land speeder, I would do. Uh, but um, one of my secret obsessions is I love um, like people that build camper vans and make mobile homes from transit vehicles and that sort of thing. And I, there's this really good video that this guy did, um, which I'm going to put on now, but he made this gorgeous little mobile mini home, uh, which I thought I, I would share with you now. So here we are. The drill, take out a mortgage, buy a nice house in the suburbs, work a desk job for the next 40 years to pay it off, retire and die. It's the American dream. That's not a dream, that's a nightmare. But in a world full of white picket fences, there's people who think differently. They're the innovators, the creators, the doers. Mm, the people so the who value really... experiences over things and simplicity over riches. The van it doesn't lifers, appeal to you. the container home architects, no, it doesn't everything appeal to my wife, so I know this what you mean. This is the tiny home movement. Ever since I first heard about tiny homes, I've been absolutely obsessed. I just think they're so cozy and fun, and I love the concept of living more simply. It's been a dream mm. of mine for years to build my own tiny home, but how would someone like me make that happen? I mean, I have zero construction experience, no land to put one on, and I'm the most generally clueless person to ever exist. But one thing I've learned is to make things happen, you really don't need to know what you're doing at the start, but you do need to take action. So let's get started. First, I found my trailer, an old car hauler from Facebook Marketplace. Beaten, it? it was a little bit rusty and worn down, but under its blemishes, I saw huge potential. I tore all the railing on this bad boy apart because everything sticking up had to go. If I'm gonna be the Picasso of tiny homes, I need a blank can Canvas, so that's what I made. I used some old reclaimed boards to provide cross support and create a level base. Then I got to work on framing the base and bolted it directly to the metal so it wouldn't fly off later. I had no idea what I was doing, but what I did know is that Bob the Builder had nothing on me. I sealed up the bottom. So one thing I'd say though, so if the wheel arches go out, if the wheel arches come out this far, I'd have brought the wood out that far as well, so in line with the outside of the wood arch, uh, wheel arch. May as well use every single bit of space you can. And put spray foam in the corners to keep out the creepy crawlies. My friend Joe had this dummy thick foam left over from insulating his garage, so I used it for the base and it worked great. Papa's little piggies are gonna be warm on this floor. And over the top, I added particle board underlayment, which would later be covered by a layer of plywood. I don't know what I'm not too sure I think what um, is, but an old guy down the street board. told me it's important, so we're rolling with it. We're going to build a wall. It's going to be built. My walls had to be built around the fenders of the trailer, so I started from the bottom and worked my way up from there. I designed and built each of these walls flat on the driveway and then carried them over to the trailer from there. At this right point, in. you might be wondering how I planned out the design for this build, and to be totally honest, I really didn't. I had a general idea of what I wanted <laughs> it to look like, drawing. but for the most part, I was just kind of like, yeah, that seems like a good height for a window. Yeah, let's put the door back you wish there. You could do some Six like feet this. tall for the loft. I'm sure I won't I think, my head I on I think that pretty much anyone could do it. Videos. If, if you look into enough one, and my walls came to prep life, and then the put together as it should be. an organized disaster. Thanks to YouTube tutorials, I went from being a really bad carpenter... See, he just said YouTube to YouTube tutorials. Well, you know, if it's something you want to do, dude, yeah, go for it. To being a fairly bad carpenter, was it easy for an ostrich-looking fellow about like insurance? myself to do all this work? I don't, I don't know no. about that sort of was thing. Was it a good I mean, workout? You'd have to look into it all, also, you? no. I'm pretty sure I actually broke my back lifting these things. Today, I'm framing the roof, and for the joists, I'm using these 2x6 boards. On each side of these 2x6s, I'm carving out a little doobly-doo, just so that it fits better with the framing. My boards were looking thick, and my doobly-doos were looking deep, and we all know that's the recipe for a perfect roof. This rusty old trailer was <laughs> finally starting to look like a house. A really small one, but still. So the next thing I did to add just a little bit of structural support is I took some of this plumber's tape and I wrapped this stuff around all the corners just so that when this is out on the road going around bins and stuff, it'll stay together and have a little bit more structural support when it's it trying does to swing structure, out. It does structure, it looks solid. same thing with these little braces on the upper corners because triangles are strong. And on every single corner, I put one of these braces because I'm not trying to see my hard work fall apart. And just like that, my beautiful, beautiful skeleton is all done and it's time to add the meat. <laughs> That sounds messed up. Most people go with thicker plywood for the sheathing, but I went with quarter inch just because it's lighter and cheaper. This entire process took me about three days, but you guys- I think that's like 12 mil. Montage. Might be, yeah, about 12 mil. It looks about 12 mil thick. So now that I'm all done with the I'd sheathing, with, I need to make this loft. Yeah, I, I'd have gone with a thick, I'd have gone with 19 mil. Exactly what you say. The thing is, yes, 90 mil would add more weight, but the structural strength of 90 mil would be way better 
uh, just in all all round there, all areas. So I'd have gone in, uh, I'd have gone in 19 mil. Thing that I'll be sleeping in. So I this already is built build. the frame and do what he wants, man. extra boards on the side so that it's all secure all around. Next, I'm going to take some plywood and put it on top. And I used one inch to make sure it could hold up my dump truck. I had to do a lot of trigonometry to figure out the angles for the boards up top, so good thing I was a nerd in high school. I added this cute little square to the frame for the skylight to go into, yeah, and we were ready for the roof. For the roof, I used half inch plywood because I felt like this is something that should actually be straight. Oh. And it's right about this time that I started gaining some... You see, you say it's too small for you, which is fine. Fair enough. I, I know for a fact I've had a, f a bed sit smaller than that. So I had a bed sit that was just big enough for me to put a bed in, a small wardrobe, a s kitchen sink, and uh, that was basically it. It was just a tiny, tiny room. Year, decades ago. And it was cosy. I was quite happy there, to be honest confidence not gonna lie i really didn't think i'd make it this far i thought i was an absolute clown with power tools who had no chance of making this happen but what i proved to myself is that i was a clown with power tools who was gonna make this happen after all next it was time for weatherproofing so i put this tar filled fruit roll up from the underworld over the roof it's called an ice and rain shield and it's really nasty but it'll help protect the roof from the elements the next step in the tiny home build is for me to install the house wrap which is kind of like a big piece of wrapping paper for the home that waterproofs it and protects it from uh. the outside world normally you see tyvek home wrap on houses but i have this knockoff stuff because i'm cheap people usually staple the stuff up but i'm gonna use these plastic cap screws instead because each Screws? staple would just leave a little hole that water could get in and these things are watertight okay yeah so there's a really specific way you have to cut out the windows and luckily i found a video where stephen king taught me how we're all done cutting this thing out so the next thing i'm putting up is this membrane and it's kind of this sticky nasty black tape that'll that looks really layer sticky in that stuff and the windowsill and protect it from any water coming in the next step is to put in the windows i mean to be fair he must have put, put a fair bit of time into studying and then learning and how to do this online, to like, like tutorials and stuff. He must have done. Minute. Then I did the exact same thing with the door, which was really nice because then I could finally go inside again. And it's important to note that I used tempered glass for all the glass in this build since it'll be out on the road and needs to be strong. Then I watched enough YouTube tutorials in a single night to become an expert on metal roofing. I flashed the edges and then screwed the panels down with watertight roofing screws. Then I found a cool tool at Home Depot to cut the metal with and I was really excited because this yeah, dope, use proper safety glasses, not screwing goggles. Then I flashing to the skylight, and that's really important because that's where I'm going to be sleeping. I actually had to drive all the way to Idaho to get these. He did a good job of the roof. I will be honest, he did a good job. I, th I, I can't comment on the diagonal roof. I don't know if the it should have been the if the ribs are on it should have been going down off going sideways is all right I, I don't know that's right i had to saddle up a moose and ride it over the hills to get this roof but it was all worth it all right the next step is to put the siding on and i feel like the side must is be canadian really what's give yeah i think he's canadian feel and really make it come alive just like i did with the roof i became an overnight expert on metal siding you pretty much just put up these metal brackets on the perimeter and then slide a sheet of metal into them this process was pretty tedious but it was also really fun it kind of feels like building legos also can we just talk about how mentally good for me this build was not only was i learning a new set of skills every day but time spent skills. working became very calming and therapeutic i think just the process of building a tiny home could have huge positive impact on anyone you should try it out i'm really glad i'm painting it because honestly i low-key hate this color scheme it looks like i'm trying to open a mobile unit for red lobster what are your thoughts on the exterior right now oh it looks amazing i just think you've done so much with it I'm I'm impressed. I the think it's impressive. Thing I need to do is sand off all the rest on the trailer. Honestly, I should have done this first thing, but I was going to say that you should. Ambitious. Now is better than never. That should so have been the first thing you did. Grinding. I'm all done sanding this thing. I think all the rust is off the surface. That was absolutely horrible. So the next step before I start applying paint is I'm going to go around and rub this thing down with denatured alcohol. And what that's going to do is it's just going to kind of clean up any dust, make sure it's a totally clean surface, that when I put that paint on, it sticks directly to the metal. Mm. And in the middle of working, look who came to check out the tiny home. Hey, what's up? It's your boy. Right, let's go check this thing out. Looks pretty bougie from the outside, bro. Ooh. Bougie. <laughs> oh, 
snap. Yeah. You got that little window there, you can stargaze. Look, I'm a big guy. And look, I can stretch out completely. I can look up at the stars. If it's late at night and I'm in the woods, if Squatch peeks over, I can say hi. And I just can't believe it can fit my fat ass, you know what I'm saying? Time to get all the metal painted today. And what I'm using to paint it is this Valspar anti-rust paint. Up until this point, I did everything by myself. Mm. So it was really nice to have an extra set of hands to help. It kept raining on and off really day, which got really annoying, but we had to tarp well, painting and we in got done. For the trim, I used these cedar boards yeah. and treated it with a stain and poly mix. You know right, what I dude. say, I like my cedar, I, I, I think like it looks coffee, good. so I stained it black. <laughs> I'm edgy. For the door, I did the exact same thing with cedar, and then I used yeah, this it looks walnut good, color but it'll to stain make it, it and I'm pretty hot. sure that's not what walnuts look like, but we're gonna right. roll with okay, it. Right, okay, fair enough. The last step of the build was to put in the cedar siding, and for yeah, this, that's I used tiny cedar white boards white and that same walnut stain. I had to stain ah, each board individually, which made this a super repetitive, tedious process. I secured the boards to the wall using these waterproof brass screws and I put them in right on the tongue to make the pattern happen. The process was slow, but one board at a time, I came closer. I mean, you must, you must know where you're screwing these things in too, because work, not even there's only nine, the there's only like it, I was 12 done. mil worth of wall. Right. So you must be screwing into the, uh, isn't it beautiful? It looks better beams. than I would have ever imagined, but the real test is will it survive on the road? You better believe it worked. This thing was smooth sailing. It was about as aerodynamic as a potato, but it was pulling just fine, and I was stoked out of my mind. And that's how I turned my dream of building a tiny home into a reality and became a homeowner. Even if the home is only 150 square feet, it still counts. Between the trailer, yeah. lumber, windows, siding, etc., this entire build costed about eight grand, which I'm actually really happy with. And of course, that's just the exterior. I'll have an interior video coming at you as soon as I'm done with it that. It looks right, big it's time inside. For me to get YouTube and go build the tiny home. Bye. I mean, it, it does look really big inside, so yeah, I I think he's done a really good job. We've done long. And uh, the thing is, it cost him about eight thousand dollars. That's not a bad idea. I mean, apparently in America, well, especially Canada, the uh, the housing market is meant to be an absolute nightmare. It's meant to be so so expensive is that the uh, normal house is out of the reach of pretty much everybody so yeah why not spend eight thousand dollars and build something like that it looks really cool and if it's warm and you can live through it why not i i would definitely go for it personally